Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to talk about basic operations for manipulating discrete time signals. Things like scaling a signal by a constant, shifting it in time, adding two signals, multiplying two signals, uh, and flipping or reversing a signal in time, which is something we'll see a lot uh, when we get to convolution in a few uh, more videos. Uh, so that's the, the main point for today's uh, lecture, or for today's video. Let me uh, get my whiteboard up here and we can talk through this. Right, again, basic operations on signals is the main, main point for today. And, and the five we'll talk about the most. There are others we'll see as the semester goes on, but uh, scaling a signal by a constant is, is one we'll, we'll see often. And so what this looks like is we may be defining a new signal, y of n, that is equal to a times x of n. Another example uh, would be uh, adding two signals. We might say some new signal z of n is equal to a signal x of n plus v of n. And the way either one of these would work is you, you can, in theory, just plug in one value of n at a time. So you can just plug in when n equals 0, y of 0 will be equal to a times x of 0. When n equals 1, and I'll show an example of this in a minute, when n equals 1, a times x of 1. Same thing, I want to find z at time 2. I take x at time 2 and add v at time 2. I can also, we'll also see multiplying two signals together as an operation we'll use this semester. So if I had z of n, instead of mul adding the two signals, I could take the value of the, each signal at each time and multiply them together. So again, like z at time 0 would be the value of x at time 0 times v of time 0. In terms of shifting, my new signal y of n could be equal to x of n uh, minus some shift m. And we'll see this can be, depending on whether m is positive or negative, this could go left or right. And we'll get some practice with that. And then another operation that we'll see come up when we talk about convolution in a few more videos is that y of n, if I flip something or reverse it in time, y of n is equal to x of minus n. A couple patterns, just if, you're, if, if you need some refreshing on functions, that's good to know, sort of to highlight here, is one of the common features of the first three things is, is all the action is outside the brackets, right? So that means these are things that are happening to amplitudes. Right? When, the, when the things happen outside the brackets, like with the first three, that means things are happening with amplitudes. Whereas if I look at what's different about these last two, right, is the mathematical notation is showing up inside the brackets, which is it's happening to the time index. So these are things that are shifting what's happening to the time index. So these tend to be things that move the signal left and right or flip it left to right, whereas the amplitudes are things that happen to the, the, the values of the signal go, going up and down, the vertical direction. All right, so, so that's a good mnemonic to keep in mind. Now, as we get more expert in practice this semester, we'll be mixing the two together. We may have equations that do both scaling and shifting in time at the same time. But to uh, let's, let's see an example of this. If we look at, here's the, the same signal we saw uh, in the first uh, example on basics of DT signals, graphing them. Here's, a, here's an example of it. And let me show uh, a couple, couple results we could do with this, or a couple examples. We could uh, do a shift in time. Oop, let me go, that should be, uh, go back to white for this. So if I want to shift in time, say for example, I could say y of n, just to make one up, would be x of n minus 3. When you're first starting out, the best way to handle this is just to plug in the values one at a time and see where they uh, where that leads you. So you could say that, well, then y of 0 would be equal to x of, if I set n equal to 0, I get minus 3 here. And if I go up and look on this plot here, if I quickly add my, my, I forgot to have minus 3 here, but we know it's 0 before the region drawn and 0 after the region drawn if we don't have information otherwise. That's our standard convention on these graphs. We'd say, well, that tells me that y of 0 is equal to 0. y of 1 would be equal to x 
of 1 minus 3, which is minus 2, which was still 0. y of 2 would be x of minus 1. And now when I go up here and look at minus 1, I'll see that the value at that point, I get my first change. This will be 1 y of 3 would be x of 0, right? Because 3 minus 3 is 0. And so when I go look at x at time 0, I get 2. So it's just sort of plug and chug along with this. And I can go along through that pattern. If I want to graph my new signal, I've got a label clearly. Well, here's y of n. And this is my time axis n. I'm going to uh, start this, say, at 0. At n equals 0, it's 0. At n equals 1 it's zero still. At n equals two, it jumps up to be height one. At n equals three, or n equals three, y of three is equal to height two. And if I continued the same process I had going on there, it's not, well, actually, let's do this. I'm gonna challenge you, pause the video, and go finish the signal yourself, and then come back and check your answer against mine. Okay, so you're back now, and I already sort of hinted this, this one, I guess wasn't a very good test because I'd already done y of 4 would be equal to minus 1, y of 5 would be, oh, not 0, y of 5 would be equal to x of uh, 2, and y of 6 would be equal to x of 3, so that's up to 1 again, All right? So we can see this, this relationship, this manipulation would be a delay in time. So when I have this thing I'm subtracting, if I have x n minus 3, that means I'm moving, this turns out to be move 3 to the right. Now it can be tricky when you're starting out, or even after time, to remember which things move right, which things move left. But both are, uh, so if you have, if you forget, and I still, I've been doing this for years and years, I still sometimes just plug in a few values of n to remind you which way the signals are going to go. And that will give you the ability to, to work out, is this going left or right? If you forget or get confused, it's always better to double check and be safe. Or even if you think you know it, and just say, oh, I've done a bunch of these, that's moving right by five or left by seven. It's good always just to do a sanity check and plug in a few values of n. Okay, so there's basic operations on signals. I may do videos with a few other of them, but they all basically work the same way, which is just plug in things. You can see what happened here was in the time domain, so that's why we move the signal left and right inside the brackets. So uh, to finish up, there's there's our basic operations uh, listed. Not There's more of them than we talked about, but it gives you a basic idea. And for most of these, it's just plugging in one value of n at a time and going through step by step until you get more practice and can do them more quickly. You'll find with practice that it comes. Uh, I'll try to do a, at least a, one more example, maybe of reverse in time, because that's a common one in scale. But I'll do those in separate videos to break it up for you. Okay, uh, thanks, and I'll see you next time.